The electrolytic cell is our second type of electrochemical cell that we will be speaking about. We spoke about galvanic cell or voltaic cells in previous videos in this playlist. So let's talk about electrolysis and the electrolytic cell. So first of all, electrolysis, the definition is over there. Electrolysis is the chemical process in which electrical energy is converted into chemical energy, or we are using electrical energy to produce chemical change. So if you take a look at the electrolytic cell that I have over here, you can see that I'm providing this cell with a battery, a power source. So power source that provides the electrical energy and that makes a chemical change inside my cell. So when asked about the energy changes that takes place in the electrolytic cell, you'll simply say electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. And what do I mean by chemical change takes place? Well, for example, we can coat or cover our electrode over here, which is our cathode, we can cover that metal with another metal. So for example, I can have a copper coin and I can decide to coat it or cover it or plate it in silver. That is creating a chemical change inside over here and it's all driven by this battery over here which provides electrical energy. So first of all, visually, how do you know that it is an electrolytic cell and not a galvanic cell. Remember we spoke about galvanic cells looking like this and now we're contrasting it to our electrolytic cell. As you know, an electrolytic cell only contains one beaker with one electrolyte and both electrodes, so the electrodes are these metals, metal rods, metal pieces over here, both electrolytes, electrodes are in the same electrolyte solution. There's no salt bridge like there is in a galvanic cell. Remember, this has a salt bridge. This one here has no salt bridge. And it's very important to note that there will always be a power source, like a battery. So remember, a battery is a DC power source. We like to use a DC power source. I will discuss why a little bit later. Just like with the galvanic cell, an ox and red cat is true. And remember, if you can't remember, what that stands for is an ox at the anode that's where oxidation occurs so this over here is my anode the process of oxidation so the loss of electrons will take place at the anode and red cat reduction the process of reduction takes place at the cathode so the gaining of electrons takes place at the cathode in an electrolytic cell i remember this acronym the anode is positive in an electrolytic cell, which means that the cathode is therefore negative. The electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode in the external circuits. Okay. And let's speak about what the electrolyte is. So the electrolyte, here's the definition of an electrolyte. It's a substance of which the aqueous solution contains ions or a substance that dissolves in water to give us a solution that conducts electricity. So it's very important to note that my electrolyte contains mol a molten ionic compound or solution of an ionic compound. Remember solution is formed when I take, for example, an ionic compound and like, for example, copper sulfate and I dissolve it in water. So that would be a solution of an ionic compound or I can have a molten ionic compound. So I molt it. So for example, like I said, if my electrolyte is copper sulfate, I either dissolve it in water or I have a molten version of this ionic compound. And what ends up happening is I create my two separate free ions, the copper ions and the sulfate ions. And why is it very important that I need the ions? Why do I need ions? Why can't it just be in its ionic form like that? Well, remember, in the solid phase, so if this is a solid, not aqueous, the ions are trapped inside a crystal lattice and that means the ionic compound cannot conduct electricity. In order to conduct electricity we need free ions. So we need ions in order to in be able to allow us to conduct electricity. So in its molten state or in its solution state when I dissolve this in water it becomes aqueous. In other words these are ions and they are free to move around. 
and therefore the ions can conduct electricity, which is exactly what I need. Because if you remember the energy changes, we said that we need to convert from electrical energy into chemical energy. So what ends up happening in an electrolytic cell, if I have to make it very basic, is we have our battery. Remember, a battery has the long terminal is the positive terminal, the short terminal is the negative terminal. So this one over here is the positive terminal, and it's connected to the positive electrode, which we said is the anode. Remember, the anode is positive in the electrolytic cell, very important. So this is the positive anode, making the other electrode the negative cathode. It's connected to the little negative terminal of the battery. There's the cathode. As you know, positive anode, negative cathode. Inside my solution, I now have what we call cations. If you did grade 10 science, if you've watched my videos, you will remember that I said that cations, they are the positive ions. Cations are positive, are positive. Positive for cats, positive. So cations, they are attracted to the cathode. Why? Because cations are positive, the cathode is negative. So the positive ions, the cations are attracted to the cathode. The cations are attracted to the cathode and the negative ions, remember the negative ions, they are called anions because anions sounds like onions. And when you chop onions, they make you cry. So anions, onions, they're the negative ions. They go to the anode. So negative ions, they move to the anode. Opposites attract. So the negatives move to the positives and the positive moves to the negative. And then the processes happen. So like we said, at the anode, oxidation occurs. So these ions will become oxidized. And at the cathode, reduction occurs. So reduction will take place over here. So here's another nice image of what goes on. And here's another nice summary. It's also important to note that these reactions are non-spontaneous. The E naught of the cell is negative. It's non-spontaneous. We have to provide the cell with electrical energy. It won't just happen by itself. We often use inert electrodes. So inert means non-reactive. So metal that doesn't react. And generally, sometimes it's both the same. or well, it's always the same in, um, in one beaker. So both of them on one beaker. We often use carbon, one electrolyte. So this is also a nice little summary and very, very important. According to the CAPS curriculum, so maybe you don't follow CAPS, but lots of curriculums follow a very similar structure. You need to know these four types of electrolytic cells. And often they like to call this over here, the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride. They speak about the chloroalkali industry as well. The chloroalkali or chloroalkali industry. So we'll be going through each of these different types of cells in the next few videos in this playlist. This is just a general video about electrolysis and the electrolytic cell. I'll see you in the next video where we will cover the decomposition of copper 2 chloride.